Your life began the day it nearly ended. We found you. With no memory, we made you one of us. So you could live longer, stronger, superior. What are your superpowers? Superpowers, dude? I don't even know how to pee in this thing. This is the Utterly Nonsense Podcast, the weekly show where we explore the latest topics in entertainment, but mostly the stuff that matters to us. You can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google, Spreaker, basically almost anywhere you can find your podcasts. You'll probably find us, and it'll always be free. Yeah, so I guess we're on a weekly basis again, huh? Maybe for the time being. It's been a while. Well, you you did say weekly, but uh, I did. So, I mean, that's news to me, but I'm pretty cool with that. Well, what we're going to do is cover... News of the previous week, obviously, since then this will be coming out on Fridays, we'll be talking about all the things news-ish related that uh, happen to pop up during the week. But remember, it's not news, it's nonsense. Mm-hmm. I had to throw in that in there. Yeah, no, that's the tagline. we got to include that in at least like every so often, you know, every every once in a while on a podcast. Yep. Like at least once per podcast, I think that's uh, worth mentioning. Yeah, we'll keep reminding people uh, of that. Yeah, so I mean, you have the uh, official list of topics in front of you. It's been a pretty busy week, actually. Yeah, so, um, so the first thing yeah. is a carryover from the week before, which is that uh, Warner Brothers has signed on to do a spinoff of Aquaman, a horror movie spinoff, uh, specifically about the uh, the trench down in the ocean. There's monsters in there, and it's going to be a horror movie. Right. I, don't, I don't know how they're going to do an so, underwater uh, horror monster movie, but... Uh, well, yeah. um... So you didn't see Aquaman, did you? I did not yet. Okay, first of all, you got to see it because, um, it, you know, it, first of all, it's the highest grossing DC movie of all time. I know you're a diehard DC guy, but um, uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best DC movies ever made. Like, uh, I think the only thing that might be on top of it for me is The Dark Knight. So it, it's really high caliber. Definitely like an entirely separate genre. But uh, wait, you're saying best DC movie, not just DC EU? Yes, uh, it's that good. Okay. I'm going to have to preemptively disagree with that, even though I haven't seen it, but okay, carry on. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like I'm setting a high bar, but uh, it's very good. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't want to get too deeply into it. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen it, go see it. It's worth seeing. But Well, uh, it's not in the theaters anymore, you know, so you can't see it. Right. Yeah. Well, it's going to be on DVD, I think, beginning of March. So, uh, you know, check it out then or wherever you get your movies. Right. Um so, yeah, for anyone who's not aware, the uh, guy who actually directed uh, Aquaman was a guy named James Wan, who uh, very famously created the Saw franchise and later went on to direct The Conjuring. Uh, so very much a horror guy. Like, this is not – I don't know if it's his first non-horror movie, but it's uh, the first major, like, blockbuster he's made that hasn't been in the horror genre. So, you know, for him to be – like producing a horror movie spinoff for uh, Aquaman to be going the route of the trench. Uh, it, it's interesting. Like I, I, I can fully see it uh, within the realm they've set up and the actual creatures of the trench are these like basically mutant, uh, not really Atlanteans, but uh, sort of Atlanteans like in the same sort of species. Like they are a version of Atlanteans where evolution just went horribly wrong. Um, right. And you do see them briefly in the early third act of Aquaman. Uh, but, you know, you don't know too much about these things other than they're really aggressive and they're just attacking the hell out of uh, our main characters. Um, so, you know, I, I, it's an interesting point in the movie, so I can sort of see why they're adapting it, but uh, it's going to be a weird one to actually see it work. Horror movie spinoff of a superhero thing kind of reminds me of how they're doing New Mutants, which comes out who knows when. Which is, of course, yeah. the spinoff. Well, that's Batman. supposed to be coming out. That that's supposed to be coming out this year. Um, oh, is it? I, I've seen no, virtually nothing about it. Yeah, I know the press for that has been lousy, and I think that part of that comes down to just Fox not knowing how to make movies anymore. Apparently, uh, 
part of it coming out to a uh, Marvel's acquisition of the whole, uh, basically everything that is Fox entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we do have another topic. I don't know if you want to pivot to that this early on, or if you want to talk more about the Aquaman stuff, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that at a later point, but okay. just to make note, <laughs> Fox's previous attempt at making a horror out of a superhero, aka Fant Force Stick, did not go too well. Well, even that wasn't really a horror movie. Like, it had horror elements, I guess. The director but, uh, wanted it to be. Yeah, which uh, I, I have a feeling that the reason Fant Force Stick failed so hard was because it was, um, you know, like it, it was studio intervention when it came down to it. It was Fox meddling with uh, a director's vision. Like, from what I heard, uh, the director had this whole idea for an indie Fantastic Four movie. Um, that actually sounded pretty good on paper, so I I, I don't know. I, I, I'd i have to blame the studio for that one. And I blame both, because reading his ideas, they didn't sound great either. Right. You know? But aside from that, uh, it's also confirmed, which we probably already knew since the movie made over a billion, that Aquaman is getting a sequel. Yeah, not shocking in the slightest. Yeah, not at all. Um, so uh, th- we don't know really anything about the sequel at this point. Uh, we don't even know... I I don't th- I don't think we know at least when it's coming out. Um, I'd probably say twenty twenty one at the earliest, right? Yeah, it's a safe bet. Um, yeah. So what we do know is uh, James Wan is back to produce. Uh, whoever the screenwriter is, whose name I've completely spaced out on, is uh, going to be writing this one too. So, uh, you know, d- definitely some uh, like um, I I would say that's a winning combination. You know, I would say uh, they've made some good steps to actually keep this whole thing going on. Right. Um, So going back to Dark Phoenix um, for a minute, uh, (laughs) this was something on the Watch Mojo channel. I don't know if it had any other coverage than that, but it it was... um, This was actually on... That was on Looper, actually. Looper, uh, okay. I can can use all those because they... I've explicitly blocked uh, Watch Mojo from actually showing me anything. Looper, uh, Watch Top... I'm sure they probably... Top 10 things I didn't care about. (laughs) They all do. Yeah, but... um, But, uh, Yeah, no, Looper's not great either, but uh, I I think it's at least a step above Watch Mojo. Um, So, this was posted at the end of January saying that Dark Phoenix was not doing well in test screenings, even after they went back and did reshoots. Right. Which m- might explain why it's been delayed so many times. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think that's shocking in the slightest. Um, so, look, based on what the initial things we've seen about it, the fact that it has been pushed back multiple times, the fact that uh, it has gone through multiple rounds of reshoots, uh, the fact that they've adapted this storyline before and it didn't work the first time, uh, these should all be red flags, you know. Um, beyond that, I-, I think the thing that people aren't calling out as much uh sophie turner is just a terrible gene gray <laughs> like I, I i don't even understand why they're like centering a movie around her when she was one of the worst things about x-men apocalypse yeah well i mean what would make a good gene gray is gene gray even a good character i don't even know that she does uh, have I mean, much I, of a character to begin with yeah i mean i guess it's arguable um remind me who played her in the uh, original trilogy famke jansen famke jansen did i say that right yeah that's well, she was a good Jean Grey. I, I, I loved her portrayal of the character. Um, and part of that is because there was a complexity there. Even if you're not a fan of The Last Stand, it was an interesting arc. Um, you know, obviously that was not the best example of a, X, a good X-Men movie. That's but, what um, I want to know. Why are they doing the same plot as the worst X-Men movie? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say it's the worst. Uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine is probably the worst. Um no, I, I mean, you'd have to agree with that. Right? But no, it's X Men really? Origins Wolverine didn't really disappoint me like, um, but like three eh. would did because in three you have Professor no, uh, X and Cyclops both dead. How can you do that? The yeah. leaders of the X Men. Well, why? No, well, yeah, Cyclops. I thought you said Magneto for some reason. I was uh, thinking no, nah. he was alive, just uh, unpowered. Um, yeah, no. Um, it, part, I mean, my big problem with Last Stand was really just it, it really came down to Brett Ratner's uh, direction. It sort of losing any depth that the first two had and just becoming a sort of generic action flick. Um, you know, my problem with X-Men Origins Wolverine was like there were good scenes in it, but, um, you know, it was heavily relying on CG. Uh, parts of the character just felt wrong. Like the timeline didn't really make sense all too much. When they, you they, they did kind of screw, screw up parts of his origin, but. Um, I, I just chalked it up to adaptation and, problems. Yeah, so I mean that's part of the reason why I love Days of Future Past. Why, uh, aside from the Deadpool movies, it's probably my favorite X Men movie. Yeah, because it just undid um, everything. It, it, well, yeah, but it did it in a way that actually made sense. It felt natural rather than like just a shoehorned in retcon, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, no, I, it, like, so I, I think the reason behind the uh, actual creation of Dark Phoenix is because it's considered to be one of the greatest X-Men storylines of all time, as was Days of Future Past, as was uh, Old Man Logan, as was, I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting. Oh, Apocalypse is considered to be like one of their yep, like, yep, biggest yep. villains. So it, it makes sense that they're trying to incorporate the bigger storylines into the whole thing. The, the thing is, I wonder if they're going to talk at all about the Phoenix Force, which is some kind of cosmic entity thing that, that has yeah. this whole backstory to it, but they'd have to get all into almost Guardians of the Galaxy territory to really flesh that yeah, out. Yeah, no, that's that's going to be tough to develop over the course of one movie. And they and won't, chances because are, Marvel's already yeah. going to reboot it all anyway, so... It's like, what? why well, even... I mean, we don't necessarily... At, at this point, we don't necessarily know what they're going to do with uh, the X-Men. I, I have to assume they're going to incorporate them in some way. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to recast them. That's a done deal. Yeah, I, I mean, probably not uh, Deadpool, but... um. Like, I feel like Ryan Reynolds is the one guy we know is going to be safe throughout that whole process. Hope, hopefully. You know? Well, I mean, realistically, he's so intertwined with the character and he's so, like, universally adored. And both Deadpool movies were, like, major blockbuster gold. Like, it'd be an incredibly stupid decision of Disney to do it. Not that they're, like, you know, uh, not that they're against stupid decisions. Yeah. but uh, I did hear X-Force was taken off the schedule list, though. Yeah, which wouldn't shock me, considering uh, they had announced that, like, well before the Disney-Fox takeover. Oh, did it really? Um, that far back? Yeah, no. Well, it, it was a while ago they announced it, and uh, I, I think it was around the same time they announced Deadpool 2, actually. Hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. That might just be, like, Disney still figuring things out. Um, yeah, what was I saying about Phoenix War? Oh, yeah, the one character I'm shocked they didn't include was Mr. Sinister. Yeah, they kept <laughs> like, alluding I, to him, and then what was he even in? Right. Is he going to be in this? He, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I can't see any way they could naturally bring him in. Oh, it. wait, is, um, or, or is he going to be in uh, New Mutants? Uh, you know, I could see that, actually. Um, I, I, I Honestly, at this point, I really don't know. As far as I know, like there were multiple actors who were considered for the role throughout history. Um, there have been multiple references like throughout this whole franchise. Like, I, I think uh, Logan actually gets a... Uh, like in, There's a deleted scene from The Wolverine where uh, he actually gets a suit from uh, the Essex Corporation. And uh, in Deadpool 2, the actual school for... Uh, or not school, but you know what I mean. The... Um, Basically, the place where the young mutants are getting abused and converted or being told they're, you know, impure or whatever. Right. Um, that It's called, like, the Essex, Essex School, which is, you know, his uh, real surname, uh, Mr. Sinister's real surname. Hmm. Um, so there have been references, but, it, you know, you have to wonder if that's just their way of trying to say, oh, hey, uh, we know we're not including the, him, but uh, these little winks to the audience... Uh, you know, they, these should satisfy people. Uh, we, well, I don't know if that's their way of just doing that or saying, hey, we're like, he definitely exists in this universe. We're going to show him at some point, And they just never got to that point. Um, it, it's really just a massive gray area and a massive thing that the whole franchise has overlooked. A massive gray yeah. area. Gene gray. Yeah. <laughs> Seamless. Seamless connections. That's how we do it. Speaking of seamless connections, so <sighs> keeping in with Marvel stuff, let's talk about Captain Marvel. And I don't mean Shazam, yeah. but I do also mean Shazam, actually. Because Shazam yeah, I mean, looks we're, so we're much bring better it up eventually. than, than the, from what I've seen of Captain Marvel. Yeah. They got to bring back the real Captain yeah. Marvel. Call him Captain Thunder. Yeah, That's so, a good name. It's a good ass name. <laughs> okay, so you want to start with Captain Marvel or Shazam? Uh, well, I guess Captain Marvel, I'll just say... I don't even get the tagline. Higher, further, faster, or, or did they say farther? I don't know which. But... Higher, farther, faster, they, higher. They far... built no, her No, I mean, the marketing. But... So, I, I want to say the marketing for this thing has just been terrible. <laughs> like, um, you know, it's a Marvel movie. I'm going to see it no matter what. But it, it's just like the marketing has actively made me roll my eyes every time I've seen it. You know, um, I think the most eye rolling thing is when it says they need her a hero. <laughs> yeah, they're they're just pushing like the whole feminist thing so yeah. heavily. Like they're trying to make their own Wonder Woman and just failing miserably. It really seems like um, they're trying to make it like the Marvel. They're Wonder trying Woman. to cash in on that whole movement. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to see what they do with her. Um, 
Uh, apparently, like, so I, I shouldn't say. It. Well, I, I do want to see it. Um, you know, it's going to probably be the first look we get at what's going to happen in Endgame prior to Endgame actually coming. I'll just wait for Endgame. I already know what's going to happen. Yeah. They're going to say, oh, she's the most powerful. She's the best. We need her now. And then she comes, zoom, take this, Thanos. You're defeated. Ha ha. Yeah, so, um, so, I mean, we do know a few things about why they're making the she's the most powerful claim. Um, so I, I don't want to play devil's advocate here and actually try to make the claim that she is the most powerful, uh, based on the limited knowledge we have. Um, so based on some of the things we've seen, like, she is capable of surviving in space. She has these wickedly powerful photon blasters. She is a trained warrior from this warrior race. Uh, she's physically stronger than pretty much any character we're seeing, aside from, like, the actual, like, strong ones. Remind me again, what is she um, a part of? Because I know it's not the Nova Corps, which I would have rather she's, seen. She's a Kree. She's a Kree. So she's, at least this version of Captain Marvel is half Kree, half human. And uh, it, it's like we sh- we're sort of gathering from the plot that she was a human who was abducted and injected with Kree DNA. Well, like, and, what is this Kree uh, thing? Are they, are they a police Kree. force or a Green Lantern they're, thing? Or? No, the... They're their own race. Like, um, I, I'm trying to think of what the other sort of comparison is. Like, if you remember Ronan the Accuser from Guardians of the Galaxy, he's a member of the Blue Kree, which are like the uh, minority, but the uh, they believe they're inherently superior and they're sort of the ruling class. But they're also, you know, they're they're the main sort of uh, what you think of when you think of the Kree. But there's also a lot of white Kree, which are, you know, more humanoid in appearance. Um so it's a pretty well-known race, uh, and the Skrull are like sort of the counterpart for them. The Skrull famously are the shapeshifters, uh, sort of like an ongoing alien antagonist to the Avengers uh, in the comics. Um, so the reason why people are making the claim that uh, Captain Marvel is the strongest, um, so aside from the abilities I already mentioned. Well, people are making the she's claim actually, the, the trailer is, yeah. essentially. So. The uh, actual male version of Captain Marvel, Marvel, who uh, was the Captain Marvel for the longest time in the comics prior to like the female Captain Marvel. Well, the, or the, then Marvel there was his son, adapting. Captain Marvel. Yeah. So he's one of like a handful of characters that actually killed Thanos in the comics. So I think people are making that connection. Uh, beyond that, we know from a leaked interview with Sam Jackson that Captain Marvel has the ability to time travel. Um, we're not sure exactly how this ability came about or if it's part of her natural thing or if she has like people are saying she has some seventh infinity stone that gives her that ability, which I think is a pretty ludicrous theory. But, hmm. you know, we'll see. Uh, so people are sort of thinking maybe that's her whole connection. Just she has just a fuck ton of powers, you know. So so they're basically just building her up to be the ace in the hole for when they do the rematch in Endgame. Right. I see. Yeah. I seem to remember. Well, she's probably. I, I don't know for sure. St- but just based on right. a, 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 how should I say, an account of what someone told me about the uh, comics version of the Infinity, or what was it called in comics? <laughs> now I'm not even remembering. I, Infinity Gauntlet. Infinity, I was actually just about to ask Infinity if you Gauntlet had uh, thing. read that. Cause, that, uh, uh, that, so, that Silver Circle yeah. was the one who came in with the Deus Ex Machina. S- I could be wrong. S- well, Silver Surfer is one of the main ones in that he uh, sort of, he, he like understand. he's basically like uh, what... Uh, Okay, so you know how in the very beginning of Infinity War, uh, the Hulk comes crashing through the Sanctum Sanctorum and warns everyone? Uh, So that actually directly mirrors a scene from Infinity Gauntlet, from like one of the beginnings of uh, Infinity Gauntlet, where Silver Surfer crashes into the Sanctum Sanctorum and warns them that Thanos is coming and that he already has the Infinity Gauntlet. And at that point, it's too late because he already snaps life out of existence. So Silver Surfer was essentially um, the Paul Revere of Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Thanos is coming. The Thanos yeah. is coming. But uh, no, so Adam Warlock is sort of like the main, uh, like, he, he he's the Thanos killer, right? Like, not literally because he doesn't actually kill him, but uh, he's the one creature that's, like, strong enough to actually stop him. He's, like, the leader of the Avengers and the Marvel, like, resistance against Thanos in that story arc and numerous other uh, story Didn't arcs. he get a mention at the end of Guardians 2? He did. So Ooh. people are wondering why the hell they didn't just like include him and actually bring him out. So like he could be the main character in this one. Well, it's not his turn. Um, it's her I, turn. Got to tell you. Yeah, I, I think I mean, part of that is because like there is a religious element there. Like he there's a lot of Jesus comparisons there, like between because uh, Adam Warlock does come back from the dead. Like he's basically invincible. He's basically a god. So. Right. Um, people, I think people just wanted to get rid of the uh, whole religious imagery that uh, Adam Warlock sort of presented. Mm. 
Yeah, at least that's my initial theory. That's sort of my reading of uh, Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. Well, aside from that, my unenthusiasm from Captain Marvel stems from just the whole look of it. Like, her powers, what are her powers? She she shoots beams all over the place. Okay. Yeah. A, a slightly boring. Like, it's, okay, say people say, used to say Superman's boring because he could do everything. Well, now, she does everything, yeah, and this is not yeah. supposed to be boring now? No, I, I fully it's like, agree. Uh, okay, and, I accept... Uh, I accept the boring claims, and and now it's like we're supposed to be excited for this. Um, she looks bored in all the trailers, which I yeah. hear is supposed no, to be she's her, some allusion to her being yeah. raised with no emotion. But yeah, so appar- uh, yeah, that's apparently a like Cree thing. Like they're raised to be non emotional, but um, I I don't know. Yeah. Like, but it, it, that, that doesn't I, I'm, help. I'm that, kind of questioning what they're doing. I don't know. That. Just something about her face, her face structure. It doesn't look good. When yeah, no, she has like no expression from. the whole time. Yeah, I don't know. Which I I, ha- I have to give her the benefit of the doubt and uh, just sort of assume that that's what she's going for. Like, I mean, Brie Larson is an Academy Award nominated actress. She's been fantastic in pretty much everything I've seen. Yeah, I'm sure there's so an explanation. I have to assume that's just, just a creative choice. It just doesn't come across as very appealing. But you know what does come yeah. across as appealing? Shazam, because he's literally a kid, and so the whole time he's just smiling and taking everything lighthearted. And yeah, D- it's big all grown. DC up. claims to say, or claims to be, every single movie is a course correction, right? It's like, oh, well, this is gonna be lighthearted. Right. This is gonna have jokes. Well, Shazam is meant yeah. to be lighthearted and have jokes, right? So, um, Aquaman actually sort of had that vibe, too. So, th- like, this isn't just coming out of nowhere. Like, they're definitely sort of building into yeah. a more lighthearted DC universe. But Billy Batson isn't and, uh, some I... foretold king who's going to bring balance to the o- oceanic force. He's just, hey, kid. Yeah. No, he's just a kid. You are worthy of this power. Boom. Okay, now do something good. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it does look actually really cool so far. Um, I Honestly, I don't think there's too much to say that hasn't already been said. Just, uh like from what we've been getting from the initial trailers. Uh, it just looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I've yeah. been pretty anxious for the whole thing since I saw the first trailer. Oh, and so. very good thing for me. Like I said before, I'm a bit of a snob now. I like to see practical effects on the screen. You know why? Because I feel mm-hmm. like when there's something that's actually physically put there, it's more endearing in a way. It wasn't generated by right. a bunch of dudes sitting in a air-conditioned laboratory. Someone thought about you know how do we get this on the screen and uh, how do we film it like you know old times i like old stuff old is good new is bad but I, anyway i'm sure there's cg in the movie but there's not too much cg in the trailers which i like not every everyone's mm-hmm. hair isn't flowing around majestically for the duration right so yeah i i to reiterate something we probably said uh, when we covered comic con still excited for shazam yeah it looks cool yeah okay what's next well Piggybacking off DC stuff, there's a new animated movie coming out, Batman TMNT, based on the comic crossovers that we got. There was one, and there was two. I, I think that was, like, one of the early podcast things we covered. Like, I think that was something that came, like, a couple, a year or two ago. And yeah, it was the second um, of their crossovers where yeah. Bane appears. And coincidentally, this animated movie will have Bane and Rachel Ghoul, who was in the... Uh, the first time they crossed over, so I guess they're combining the stories. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that just seems like a bunch of elements that shouldn't mix. I, I didn't end up actually reading any of the uh, Batman TMNT crossovers, so I can't really judge too much. But, it, I mean, it just looks like a cash grab to me. and Like, just based off of my initial instinct, I'm sure it's going to do fine, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. I... I, I'm not gonna pay to see that, you know. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely pick it up because with the animated movies, for a while they've just been doing things I don't have that much interest in. Like I think the last one they did was the Death and Return of Superman or the uh, Reign of the Superman. And right. Yeah, that looks pretty dull. Yeah, I watched the Death and Return the first part, and I don't know. A lot of people were praising it, but it, I just it, it missed so many, <sighs> so many plot. I don't know if, if I say plot points, but it definitely just took the whole story and just blasted through it. Like, at the very end, when they rush through a funeral of, uh, you know, for Superman, it's like, right at the end of it, it's just, oh, he just flew out of the coffin! Oh my god, what's happening? And, and they have, like, very brief cameos from, you know, what would be Superboy and Steel and, uh, what's his name, uh, Hank Henshaw, who becomes the cyborg Superman. So, I don't know, to me, it wasn't good. So I didn't bother with the yeah, Raven enough. Superman. But this thing... I will look into. It, it has a funny looking aesthetic so far. We see Batman. He's in his Silver Age look. He has like the blue cape and the 
the target symbol. Batgirl has a redesign, and then it's Damian Wayne Robin, and then it's the it's like looks like two D versions of the 2012 Ninja Turtles, the three D animated ones. This looks like if you right. drew those, but in two D. So it's all these weird visual styles going on. Yeah, but I think I, I mean, think it could be decent because it's a crossover. When does that happen before? What if we had an intercompany crossover as a cartoon? That's a good question. I can't really think of any. Nor can I. Um, yeah, nothing off the top of my head, at least. I mean, uh, uh, of course, like the obvious connection, I think, is like Amalgam and uh, you know the D- like the cash grabs from DC and Marvel back in the nineties. But uh, those are great. I-, I think that's hardly the same thing. Yeah. Oh, actually, there um, there is another one, uh, another funny uh, cash grab crossover that I want to get when it comes out in the collected edition. Star Trek Transformers mm. is, uh, I think, coming out in May. That they have like the ongoing issues now. It's a five part series. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could see that if they really wanted to dive into the whole uh, Transformers yeah. or Aliens, uh, you know, that whole storyline. Yeah, they've had Star Trek Green um, Lantern, TMNT, Ghostbusters, you name it. There's so many crossovers. Right. There's even a designated Earth in DC and Marvel where it's uh, a, a coexistence of all the characters. Like, it's, this is apparently where the original Superman, Spider-Man crossover happened, Batman, Daredevils, uh Spider-Man, Batman, Batman, Punisher, and Avengers Transformers. So you got <laughs> Justice Leaguing things, avenging things, and transforming things all in one place. <laughs> Neat. Neat indeed. Okay, so um, I-, I guess as long as we're on the topic of DC, um, I did want to talk about the uh, state of DC Universe. Uh, we've got Doom Patrol actually coming like pretty soon. Yeah, Doom so, Patrol. Uh, I, th- I think that's, what, a- like a month away? Yeah, I think so. Give or take? I could be wrong about the release date, but uh, I mean, I mean, we've seen some initial promotional materials. They had a cameo in Titan, so uh, now here's the best thing. There's a little bit to talk about. Here's there. the biggest thing to talk about: Doom Patrol. Brendan Fraser is back. Yeah, Robot Man. <laughs> Woo! This this man, he deserves as many new chances as he can get. I hear he doesn't have yeah, to pay. Yeah, no, he was great yet. in his heyday. Yeah, really. Huh. Yeah. Well, someone it's someone told me that, so I'm just gonna believe it with no evidence whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, uh, yeah, he was great in his heyday. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we do sort of see him briefly in the uh, Titans cameo uh, as Aquaman, or not as Aquaman, as uh, Robot Man. Yeah. Um, I forget who the other big name is, who's uh, Matt Balmer is uh, playing uh, Negative Man, mm-hmm. which uh, if you're familiar with him, he was uh, he was big in uh, the later seasons of American Horror Story, like right before it turned to like what it currently is. Mm-hmm. Robot um, Man and but, Cyborg, two Robot Men. Yeah. Cyborg should be in Teen yeah, Titans. Which seems What's going on? Pretty interesting. Well, yeah. So I mean, uh, just for anyone who's not familiar with the whole story arc of Titans, um, first of all, like check it out. It's actually like much better than uh, the trailers gave it justice for. Like, um, I actually really enjoyed the first season. Um, but uh, yeah, so the sort of cameo we see happens mid-season. Um, Beast Boy famously was a part of the Doom Patrol before he was a member of the Teen Titans, and we sort of see that illusion. And uh, the, I believe it's the fifth season of Teen Titans. We sort of see that connection. Yeah, you do. Um, so Titans uh, sort of uh, references that. Like we know that he's part of this team before he's actually part of the Titans. We see the inside of the uh, Doom Patrol mansion. I guess you could call it. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's just a nice nod to, like, Beast Boy's roots, and it's a nice way to sort of introduce these characters to this uh, larger DC universe. Yeah. Um, I will say the but, trailers uh, for yeah. Doom Patrol so far are better well edited, edited than the trailers for Titans. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Don't just look like a... Uh, Fuck that man. Then I don't yeah. give off that vibe. Which uh, I will say, like, he's nowhere near that edgy in the actual show. Um, they really screwed up Robin just in that trailer. Yeah. Um, no, it's actually he actually has a pretty nice arc in this, and it's not like Batman is like a violent psychopath. In oh, this. but just, I did uh, see a clip of Batman just kicking absolute ass from Titans, where yeah. it's um, yeah, that, Robin that's, having a hallucination. Yeah, that's exactly. That was a great scene. I was like, yes, finally, Batman's doing what needs to be done. They weren't even criminals. Yeah, but though. so no, and he was like murdering cops like for five minutes straight. Yeah. Well, I saw the scene out of context. I was just like, whoa. Yeah, no, it was a cool scene, but um, that that's like towards the end of the season, so I can't really explain like what mm. caused it or anything like that. But um, I just imagine you know Batman it's... in that scenario saying, "Fuck justice." But uh, the interesting thing is you never see his face. Like 
I, I know they have someone playing the body of Batman there, but um, it, it's just like the original Teen Titans where Bruce Wayne is like, he, you can sort of get the sense that he's around, that he's part of this universe, but you never see him. And he, it doesn't overshadow the rest of the team. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a nice touch there. Um, so Doom Patrol does look pretty cool. I, I did have some issues with the initial character designs for Cyborg. You know, just like the actual prosthetics. Uh, you know, I, I guess it's, you know, if, if you're really a fan of practical effects, it's, I, I would say, better than just straight CGI yes. like we got in uh, Justice League. Yes. But um, it, it does look really awkward initially. And even the actor playing Cyborg looks kind of small, kind of meek to be playing that role. Like, considering Victor Stone is supposed to be this, like, super buff football player and basically supposed to be a strong guy even before getting the... Uh, well, I, I, at least he looks like a guy instead of a moving green screen effect. Yeah, no, no it's, it could be a lot worse. And, you know, in motion, uh, in the initial teaser we sort of get, uh, it, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm anxious to see what they do with the character uh, in the whole thing. Uh, the other character that's actually in the trailer that we didn't see uh, in the cameo was Crazy Jane, who's like basically <laughs> Legion from Legion. Crazy in Jane. that she has like she has like multiple personalities, and each personality has a different power. But uh, you know so it, it's kind of an interesting character. Um, yeah, it's good. You know cool. that name is funny. You know why that name is funny? Why is that name funny? Because that's the nickname I gave my chemistry teacher in tenth grade. Yeah, that's funny only to you, John. <laughs> hey, she was nuts. Let me tell you. I'm sure she was most. I mean, you'd have to be nuts to teach chemistry, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. This has been some big nonsense. <laughs> yeah. So until next time, without further ado, you know what this is. It's been utterly nonsense. You can listen to full episodes of the podcast on any platform where you can find us, as I've said. And you can watch the clip segments during the week on YouTube only. And you can check us out on social media, all the links of which will be in the description. So I'm John, he's CJ, and as always, it's not news, it's nonsense. Hate the music, play us out.